Bro, I, w- I would really love to know more about your ayahuasca journey. And I would really like to know more about the contrast between talking to, you know, talking to the big guys in Vegas and then talking to the big guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'll, I'll start. I, I would love to, man. I'll start by saying it wasn't a big guy. Ayahuasca was, was a woman. Ayahuasca mm. was a woman. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I went there, man. And anybody who needs to jump off, jump off. Like, this is not mandatory stuff anymore. Now we're just fucking shooting shit. I'm just happy to be here. But I went there with my girl, Felicity, because I came back from Mexico. And she told me, listen, I've been called to this. We got to go. And I just went to Mexico. So I kind of owed her one because I was gone for a bit. I said, okay, cool. How much? She's like, 5K. I was like, cool. She's like, each. I'm like, fucking shit. So (laughs) immediately that extra money we made gone, right? Awesome. Great. Cool. But got to take care of the wifey. And we get there and I think that I'm going to be fine. I'm like, listen, I'm here. We set intentions to be a better leader. I want to show up for my guys better. I want to learn how to, you know, be that fatherly figure. I want to learn how to become a man because there's no rites of passage anymore. I'm like, I want to be a man. I want to feel like a man. I want to take on the responsibility. I can handle it. I'm here. I got this. Like I'm ready to teach. I don't need to learn anymore, but I need to learn, but like I want to teach. Everybody else there was like, I need to heal from blah, blah, blah. I need to heal from. And subconsciously, I'm like, pretty fucking good, right? So first night, we go there. It's 7 p.m. is when you take it. You Everybody gets in a line after they, you know, give you the, um, what's it called? Nor you know, when you smudge, like the smudge sage, they saged us. Then you go, you get the first cup of ayahuasca. It's in a small little cup. The shaman looks at me you can look in the shaman's eyes and you know she's just she's seen god she's just got that knowing smile that ooh, 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 ooh. gives me the cup are you ready pours it yeah pours it extra high shoot that i go sit on my mat it's a bunch what of, does it taste like it's like black licorice yeah it's a bunch of roots a mixture of roots yeah. so black licorice kind of thick it's oh uh, it's I'm not going to say it tastes bad. I'm not going to offend Mother Ayahuasca, but it, yeah. Sit down. It's a six-hour thing. You go from like seven to one in the morning. And um, I sit down on my mat. And immediately, I just start seeing like Alexander the Great pop into my head. And then Marcus Aurelius. And then Napoleon. And, and then just I had people I didn't even recognize. But like greats. People, just men with armor on, you know, old Marcus Aurelius, wise man, just men of stature, powerful men. And I'm just in my head like, yeah, that's what, that's how I'm, tra- that's what I'm trying to be. I'm just sitting there cr- crisscross. I was all like, yeah, I want that. I want that. I want that. She's showing me kingdoms. She's showing me just land, acreage forever, you know, and I, I'm just loving it. It was a really beautiful experience of like, that's what I want to be. She's like, you can be that. And it was real. I just was feeling love. And I had like a three out of 10, just like four, five, six growing. Like, oh, this is awesome. And then the shaman comes up. Okay, it's time to take the second cup. Little did I know three hours had passed. So I get up, go around. Everybody gets in line. Shaman woman looks at me. She goes, do you feel it? And me, I'm like, a little. You know, I'm fucking good. She goes, ooh, ooh. Takes the little thing, pours it, half a cup, looks at me dumps it gives me another full cup yeah no problem shoot it back i give her a little bow i'm like thank you right nice little light just boom walk back sit down chilling a lot of people lay down at that point like the first cup they were laying down because once it gets intense it's like a very large weight on you so you usually have to lay back and just like i don't know if anybody's done acid you just like it's like you're there's g-force on you you're just getting pressed down oh yeah yeah so i'm sitting up though i'm like good sitting up the the Marcus Aurelius thoughts are still floating. I'm like, yeah, show me how to be a, a leader. Show me how to be a man. She's showing me that. She's like, she comes to me now. I hear her louder. She goes, lay down. Okay. Lay down. And and I didn't want to lay down. I was kind of resistant because there's like a blanket at your foot that you can put over you. But I lay down. She's like, put the blanket on. I'm like kind of wasting time. Now that I look back, wasting time. I'm like, I don't, I'm good. I'm fine. Put the blanket on. So I have to take the time and get up. And I'm like kind of self-conscious. I put the blanket on because I'm a grown man. I'm like, I don't want to put a fucking blanket on. Put the blanket on. Is immediately after I put the blanket on, boom, zooted, gone. And um, 
she starts showing me everything. She's like, all right, you want to be this. You want to be Marcus Aurelius. You want to be smart. You want to be genius. Okay. You want to be great. You want to be a leader. Cool. 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 Here it is. And she just starts throwing information at me. Like, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Again, I'm back to like, oh, this is great. Give me more. Give me more. Give me more. I don't know if you've ever seen Indiana Jones, uh, the crystal skull, I think it was not to ruin it, but there's this woman who wants to learn from the aliens and she like finds them and the aliens, she's like, give me all your knowledge. And the aliens start pouring into her. She's like, oh, I get it. And then a meet, she start, her head starts swelling. She's like, oh, I get it. And the second get it is like, oh, fuck. And then she's like, no, no, no. And she's like, fucking, fucking explodes. That was, that's what it was. I was like, I get it. Oh, I get it. Oh, fuck. Oh, my bad. Oh, my bad. Start too much consciousness. And I, and I, I get to the point where I'm just sitting there. I, I got the fucking Tate sitting there going, my bad. My bad. Uh, my, I didn't realize who you were. I forgot who you was. I hadn't seen God in a very long time since like 18 when I took acid for the first time. And I un and she unlocked a bunch of stuff. This time she came back in full force. She goes, you fucking forgot me, boy. You fucking forgot who I was? Yeah, you want to be Marcus Aurelius? Yeah, let's go. You can be fucking Marcus Aurelius. I'm a god. That's nothing. I'm a god, you stupid motherfucker. And then the visuals come out, and I still see it's the hexagonal patterns, you know, and she, her face is just in the middle of it, just coming down at a sideways angle. Revealed herself to me in a form that didn't break my brain. And I'm just gazing upon her going, my bad, my bad. I apologize. She's like, that's fucking right. Like, that's right. That's right. And I ended, she said, sit up. And I sat up and she said, bow. And so I literally like got down and there's a, a, a centerpiece that was beautiful. It's lit up. There's a bunch of crystals in the front. It's in the middle of everybody. And I just got down on my knees and I was praying. I was like, I'm sorry. I apologize. I forgot. I'm here. Please teach me. And then everything went, okay, now we can work. And immediately, just all the pressure just let out like a balloon, letting the air out. She's like, okay, now we can work. Ooh. Fuck, bro. Still on the first night. She leaves. Pretty good. On that first night still, there was a couple hours where after that I laid down and she started doing work on me because now we could work. And she was like going up my arm, going down my other arm. Dan Harrison said this really cool because he he did ayahuasca. He's one of the person that was at the retreat. He might be here in uh, Kelowna when we do our retreat with Ted. He came to the cabin last year. Amazing guy. He was saying that he felt ayahuasca traveling through his body. I felt her traveling through my body. She's like peeking at everything, bro. She's like, oh, this is good. This is good. Your shoulder's a little fucked up. She's like kind of playing with it a little bit. And then she gets down to my stomach. She goes, this is where you hold all the stress, huh? Oh, this isn't good. We got to get rid of this. And I feel her starting to like tinker around. Tick, 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 tick. Like sniffing and cutting. Tick, 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 tick. She's like, all right, done. Throw it up. Well, I don't want to throw up. And I feel my body go. Mm -hmm. It's like, throw it up. Come on. This is the bad stuff. You don't want this. You got to get rid of it. I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want it. Everybody's here. I'm going to throw up in front of everybody. Like, Come on. You got to throw up. Sit up. Like, I don't want to sit up. I don't want to sit. She's like, sit up, motherfucker. Five minutes. I'm just, I don't, I'm fine. I'm fine. Eventually, I get up. Fuck. She's like, grab the bucket. I'm sitting there like, I don't want to grab the bucket. Grab the bucket. Five minutes again. I'm grab the bucket. Fuck. I'm looking around. Like, is anybody looking at me? Super insecure. She's like, all right, now throw up. I don't want to throw up. She's like, come on. I go, Hoo. I feel it. Hoo. Hoo. I fight it, of course. And so... For the remainder of that trip, I was just like blowing air, just like, ooh, 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 and I didn't throw up. What a waste of time looking back now. I'm like, and it carries over to like real life when we're talking about we need to hire people. Like learning lessons from other people is the best thing ever. If you can learn from other people's mistakes, you save so much time. And that was quantified exponentially when I was literally sitting with a god. And I wasn't listening to what she was saying. And so the next night I'm like, I'm listening. I'm going to do everything she says. 
everything. I'm not wasting a fucking moment. Now we did like the integration groups where we talked about it because it's three nights. And I go, I didn't throw up because I was insecure. I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to listen. And one of the guys who ran the show, he's like, you know, nobody gives a fuck about you, right? Like nobody's watching you. They're too busy. They're doing the same shit as you, bro. Nobody's looking. Don't fucking stress about it. All right, cool. Second night, we go back, see the shaman. She gives me the first cup. I bow a little deeper. Thank you. Go back, sit there. She starts showing, she comes back pretty light, showing me visions of like, okay, you want to be a king? I get it. I've worked with all of these people. I've worked with Marcus. I've worked with all these greats. I can work with you. You're listening. This is what being a king is like. She starts showing me kingdoms, starts showing me armies, starts showing me wars. You know, you see all the good stuff and then all the bad stuff. She starts showing the decisions you have to make, the bad news you have to deliver, the people that will turn on you, the people that feel like you're not doing anything for you the people that are going to take advantage of you, the risk that you have to take and then the success that you may acquire and then all the people that will envy you for it, the assassination attempts, all all like different metaphors and different times and ages, just time is irrelevant and I'm just going through it and it's really depressing. You know, it's like, fuck. She's like, that's what, it's not fun. It's not fun, but you, you're going to have to do this. This, it's chosen you like, sorry, like, this is you. This is this is what you wanted. And you know that you need to do it. And so here it is. And I'm like, fuck. I'm still excited, but I'm also like, I know. You know, everybody knows that with being a man, there's the shit. And so then it's time for the second cup. Three hours pass. Walk over. You feel it? Matter of fact, she didn't even ask me. She looked me in the eyes and she knew I was good. I'm like, mm. Pours me a fat cup. Shoots it back. I bow a little deeper because she just knows that I'm working. She knows I'm working and it was a really, really great connection with her. Go back and sit down. She's like, all right, lay down. Let's do some work. I lay back immediately this time. I'm like, all right, let's go. Lay back. She starts working, going through everything. Boom, 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 boom. Gets back to the stomach. It's like, all right, motherfucker. It's time to throw up. I don't want to. <laughs> it's time to throw up. Sit up. I sit up faster this time and i almost almost threw up i grabbed the bucket ooh, came up real close back down it's like what the fuck is wrong with you she's talking to me now she's like what the fuck bro come on like throw up i don't want to she's like, you gotta throw up she said why and she gave me space and just sat back I was like why and i went through it and i, I told her i'm like all of this negative stuff that you say I need to get rid of is the same stuff that got me to where I am. <laughs> like this aggressiveness, this anger, this, this negative, this negative fuck you, I'll do it anyway. All, all of the spiteful energy that has gotten me to where I am. It is, is it's shelled me where and allowed me to take all, all of this pain and all of these failures and all of this hate and everybody talking shit about me and everybody expecting me to fail from a very young age. And it's propelled me to a position where I'm making large amounts of money in my eyes, right? I'm helping a lot of people and I'm, I'm, I'm good, right? Like I'm objectively speaking, I'm good. And she goes, yeah, but do you think that that's sustainable? So, and that's a great question because ever since a kid, I decided at 17, 18 that I was going to be a big music star and I was going to do a ton of drugs and I was going to get really rich. I was going to give my family all my money and then I was going to kill myself. Like, that was my game plan. I was like, I'm going to get really famous with music. I'm going to sell my soul and then I'm going to do a bunch of drugs, get rich, give my family all my money and my friends all my money and I'm going to kill myself. And I thought that that was like, yeah, that's cool. She wanted me to let all that go. And I realized that. And you guys can leave at any point. Like, don't feel like you got to be here. I'm just, I'm just giving you what you asked for. I realized that. And I've always realized that. But I did never was in an opportunity where I could like give that away. And I accepted it. And I said, okay. You're right. She's like, I know, motherfucker. But she didn't say that. And I said, but let me wait one more day because I'm going to miss this. And I was like, I felt tears welling up. Like, I'm going to miss it. That's all I know. 
that darkness that comes with you, right? That gets you through all those days where you don't know how the fuck you're going to survive. I'm going to miss that. And I don't, and I didn't know what was going to happen when I left it. Right. Like what, what if I turn into a pussy? Like, I don't know what all this is. Like, I, I don't know how she can discern what's good and what's bad, I, which is a stupid thing to question for a God, but I'm worried. I'm like, well, I, I hope I don't lose what I need. She goes, okay, one more day. And then she left. And then I sat up and I enjoyed the music. She left early. Everybody else was still in it, going through their stuff for the next two hours. I was just sitting there enjoying the music. She left because she knew that I said one more day. Third day, I was like, okay, this is the fin finale. My ego's kind of, th the thoughts in my head, I'm like, of course, it takes me three days to let it go because I need the big monumental third day finish. Uh, yeah, it takes longer for me to work through stuff than other people, all that fucking dumb, dumb shit of like, now I look back, I'm like, I could have gotten so much more work. I could have just thrown out the first day and got to the next stuff. So the guy next to me is like, yeah, I went back and relived generational trauma from when my family were, Native Americans. And I'm like, damn, bro, I didn't get that. I didn't go there. I didn't go. I'm still on the first fucking chapter, dog. I'm still on the first chapter, but I, I realized I got to let it go. So third day, get there, shoot the shot, sit down, waiting for it to hit me. Doesn't really come. Doesn't come to the level that it was before. Instead, I was just sitting up, enjoying the music. And I wanted to dance. I was like, this shit is fire. They're playing Portuguese music. They're speaking Portuguese, Peruvian. They got a flute. They got the guitar. I'm like, oh, I love music. I want to dance. And then I heard my father, you the fuck? Don't do anything that makes you stand out. You stay low key, motherfucker. And I go start going like, why don't I dance? Oh, whoa. And I go back to my childhood and I go back to growing up as a kid and being the only black kid in the school. And my, my black father telling me, you know, don't stand out. People are looking for a reason to not like you. People are looking for a reason to discount you, to count you out, to, to uphold a stereotype that has been upheld for a long periods of time. They want to use you as the reason and the excuse to hate all of our kind. And I heard my dad clearing his throat and I, I grew up in a church and every Sunday, if I were to start to move around a little too much, my dad would go, <clears throat> I just knew my dad could clear his throat and anything that he was trying to convey could be conveyed. Like if I was taking too much food, he, <clears throat> oh, that's enough, whatever I was doing. And I heard my dad <clears throat> in the fucking, on the bed, just sitting there. Okay. Shit. But then, I, then she goes, yeah, you're going to hold that. The music kept playing and I wanted to dance so bad. I go, but my dad would not approve. My dad would not approve. She goes, you're gonna, you're gonna go with that your whole life? You're gonna you're gonna not dance with your wife? Right? You and, and I dance with my with my girl in the kitchen, right? But like when my when my when her brother got married, everybody was dancing. I was not dancing. I'm sitting down, everybody's having fun. My girl wanted to dance, but I heard my dad, don't stand out. She, God God was saying, You're gonna be that dude? You're going to disallow your woman to dance, right? You're going to be the one that holds her back from enjoying herself fully and, and, and sharing that moment with her. And uh, so I, I said, fuck it. I'm going to stand up, stand up. I'm going to get to that corner over there and I'm just going to maybe like two step or something. I'm just going to, just going to vibe out. And then five minutes pass, the song ends. Another song starts. Fuck. I'm running out of time. I imagine myself taking one foot and putting it outside of the bed and and the other foot taking it and putting it outside of the bed. And five minutes go by, another song starts. I'm like, fuck. And I boom, got one foot down. Boom. It's possible. Another song goes by. Boom. Other foot down. Whoa. I can do it. It's possible. Next song comes by. Stand up, Benny. Stand up. And literally, I want to stand up. It's like when you have one of those paralyzed dreams and you want to like run and you can't. And you want to fight and you can't. And it's punching through water. I wanted to. Next song goes by. Boom, stand up. I got the fuck up, man. I got, I wobbled to the corner and I just turn and I'm listening to music and I just start two step and just. I look up and the shaman's looking at me like, whoa. Okay, motherfucker. The music starts to get louder. They start playing. They're having a blast. Everybody else is laying down. 
They're fucking going through their own shit. I'm the only one standing up. I'm vibing. <laughs> I'm just going back and forth and they play a couple of songs and then the song stops. Okay. Time to sit down before anybody gets gets up and notices me. Let me go sit down. So I go sit down. And as soon as I sit down, Shaman looks at me, starts playing another song. I go, you fucker. She's like, get up again. She doesn't like, like I see I see her communicating. She's like, you did it once. Can you do it again? I get up again. And this time it takes half the time. I get up one foot, left foot, boom, up, dancing again. She stops. All right, sit down. I go sit down. Again. <laughs> <laughs> plays another song get up again i get up boom, boom, boom dancing and that by this point i'm like i'm very very happy i'm very very happy and um songs finished and i sit down and i'm happy it's time for the second cup after i sit down we get up i go to shoot the second cup i go back and i lay down and i'm expecting you know to throw up I'm like all right now it's time to throw up she's like all right lay down i lay down i fall asleep I wake up like, what the fuck? The sun is starting to rise. This one was through the, this one, instead of seven to one, it was a uh, 1 a.m. To, to 7 a.m. So we got to see the sunrise. You get to be born again, right? I wake up I'm like, fuck, I missed a sunrise. <laughs> you know, people are starting to sit up and I didn't throw up. I'm like, fuck, I failed. I, I failed. I missed out. I fell asleep. I'm fucking damn it. And the end, the shaman comes up. The guy he goes, okay, come back from wherever you were. At the very end, I find this nice to boogie. So everybody, we're going to play some boogie music and we're going to boogie. So just get up and dance. And I was like, oh, shit. I trained for this. Y'all didn't know I was practicing for this dance. So the music comes on and naturally I would have stayed the fuck down. But I'm one of the, I'm like the third person up. I'm like, no problem. I'm just two-stepping, keeping it easy. I'm like, this is, this is great. Everybody gets up one by one. There wasn't one person that stayed down. There's 20 people there. Every single person. Like, wow, this is fucking monumental. Because there's some introverts here just like me. They're all popping up. Every single person danced. They played a song, then another song. At that point, my girlfriend was across the room. We weren't allowed to sit with each other. We were like, on the women were on one side, men were on the other side. I locked eyes with her. And I fucking did a little goofy dance over to her. Hey, I'm terrified. Of course, I'm like that's not me. That's not. That's not what I'm known for. But I was like, this is this is what I trained for. This is why I'm here. So I danced over to her, and it was beautiful. I got over to her, and we just danced together. And it was fucking incredible. We danced together. We reunited. We spun her around. It was, it was awesome. The sun was up. Monkeys were howling. <laughs> Howler monkeys going crazy, and couple tears came out of my eye. I could have bawled my eyes out if I like really let myself like I could have done so much more work. You know, I could have fucking cry. I could have sat down and just <clears throat> let one tear come down. Right. One tear hit my cheek, got down to here. I had a couple welled up here. One in the entire time hit. That was the very end. It was beautiful. I could have done so much more. Then it was over. And then we went home. And I was feeling like shit a little bit because I didn't I didn't throw up fuck, I know I've got stuff here that I did not work on. And of course, it's you, there's it's like an infinite onion. There's always more layers to peel because if you peel all yours, there's, and there's generations of onions to peel. You know, there's no lackage of an onion. But I still felt like I could have done more. Um, well, the next day I have boxing at 6 a.m. I wake up at 5, pick up my boy. We run our 5K, 25 minutes, 24 minutes. I'm like, fuck yeah. And then it's time to work out. We start jump roping. Dude, I feel my stomach start going crazy. Like, whoa, I start spitting. You know, when you start spitting before you throw up. Like, ugh, ugh. Coach is looking at me. He's like, Are you high? What are you, what are you doing, champ? What's going on? Don't waste my fucking time. He's angry. He's like, What the fuck have you been doing? Just got back from vacation in his eyes. He's like, You've been drinking? I don't drink. I wobble over after the, the jump ropes and I just <laughs> throw up. I'm like, No fucking way. I'm, I'm like excited. I'm like, Hey, he's like, What the fuck? I'm, so, I'm over the moon dude and i let that shit out an in infinite i thought i was about to float away i got so light right they say that the more the whatever it is right you know what it is but i threw up and it was just a little bit but golly it's like i threw up a billion pounds i thought i was about to float away man i felt so fucking good and then i finished training and i went back and that was my ayahuasca experience and it was absolutely incredible <laughs>